guys, it's Mandy. Um, today's gonna be a little bit more of a serious video. By the way, my hair is all wet because I just worked out and I came out of the shower, which is funny that my hair looks like crap because I am going to be talking to you guys about the absolute worst workplace I have ever worked at in my entire life. It was a learning experience and you know what, I wouldn't, I don't regret anything and I wouldn't take it back because I learned a lot and I'm gonna share with you guys what exactly I learned and what I took away from this experience. I'm not gonna name any names, I'm not gonna name the company, I'm not gonna name the people that were involved. I'm gonna use fake names and whatever because I wanna protect their identity because I don't wanna get in trouble or anything and I don't wanna have to deal with them all over again, you know what I mean? Doesn't even have to apply to hairdressers in general, but just people that are fresh out of school, college, university, or even just any workplace in general, like know your worth, know how you should be treated, don't take any crap from anybody, Always be respectful, always be polite, um, always be kind, but do not take any crap from anybody. Don't let people walk all over you. I made that mistake, but I grew from it and I learned from it and eventually I escaped. Um, <laughs> essentially, for lack of a better word, I escaped. There is this workplace, this big salon that a lot of people know about. It's pretty big, it's kind of a big deal. The salon itself is departmentalized, so it has a color section and it has a styling section and you can either do color only or styling only, which sucks in my opinion because I wanna do both. Um, so it's a good thing that I left. But it's strange because my parents had always wanted me to go to this place and I never really wanted to because I don't know why, but I had a really bad feeling about it and I can't even explain to you why or where that came from, but I always had like this like feeling inside of me that was like mm, I don't really want to go like I don't really want to go to work at this place even though it's really good like it's very expensive it's very bougie it's very you know like high class which is cool but like I just had this feeling like I didn't want to work there and that just shows go with your gut you guys don't ever let people tell you what to do don't ever let people persuade you or force you or push you into doing anything you don't want to do especially if you have a bad feeling about something don't do it follow your gut girl um, or boy, whoever you want, whatever you are. I'm just gonna try and explain to you how the salon worked. It's kind of confusing, hopefully you understand. I know some hairstylists out there will probably understand. So when you're fresh out of school and you're an apprentice, which is exactly what I was, they put you in two separate things. So the one thing is they put you as an assistant to help on the floor, to do all the washes, to do all the cleaning, to do all the setups. You're an assistant and you get paid for that for certain uh, days of the week. The other thing they put you in, it, it's something where they train you the, the way the salon wants you to be. So it doesn't matter what you learned in school, doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are, they're gonna retrain you the way they think they should have, uh, they want their client's hair to look or to be done. So they put you in this training class, which you do certain days of the week, but you don't get paid for it because it's training. So they would do that like two to three times a week. So I would show up, I would do some clients, do some training for free and then leave. And then the other days I'd come back and I would assist. Once you pass an exam in your training state, then you can become what they call new talent, which is where you take clients in, but you don't get paid much for it. It's very like minimal payment and the clients don't pay very much for it. And then once you graduate from there, you become a junior stylist and then you become a senior stylist and then you become a master stylist and people pay different prices like higher and higher and higher and higher for whichever class of stylist they're getting so as you can imagine master stylist is very 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 expensive but very very high quality very good work and i will give this salon credit for being very, very good at what they do when it comes to hairstyling. When it comes to the actual quality of work that they do, it's very good, it's very high quality, and I applaud them for that. That is the one thing I will applaud them for because other than that, their souls are black. 
I was in this training group and this is just the uh, setup, okay? We're, we're already a couple minutes into this video. Oh my gosh, we're like six minutes into this video and I haven't even gotten to the bad stuff yet. I'm just trying to give you guys, I can already tell this is gonna be like an hour long. I'm in this training group. They would expect us, and this was, let me tell you, this was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday during the day. Okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday during the day. They would expect us to bring in 10 models to train on. That's 10 people to just volunteer to come. And now, you know what? I was able to get like five people those days. I was able to get four, five, six people those days. 10 during the day, work days? No, that was very hard to do and they would punish you. They would bring you into the office. If you had not bring 10 clients in, they would bitch at you. They would give you hell and they would, you know, talk down to you and they would be like, you're not even trying, blah, blah. If you did not have 10 volunteers or models to train on, they would send you out. And by the way, this salon is in a mall. So um, they would send you out into the mall and find people who were shopping to get their hair done. It is not as easy as it sounds, people. You know when you're walking in a mall and you're shopping and you're doing your thing and you're having a good time and those annoying people that are trying to sell you things come up to you and you're just like, no, you don't want any part of it. You just wanna shop, you just wanna do your own thing. If you're not there to get your hair done, you're there to shop, you don't wanna be bothered. And the amount of like, hands in my face and you know dismisses and rejections that I got on a daily basis was really embarrassing and on top of that I was fresh out of school and I had a lot of anxiety and I did have a lot of confident issues and they would make us do that and you know like I can't control how people react to those things you know it does make I will give you this it does make you good at being a salesperson and being able to sell something or being able to convince somebody to get their hair done by you which is very good for your line of work I understand that you have to work with people and I get that but you know these people like if they're not interested they're not interested and you know I would get some assistant like I would get some volunteers here and there um, but certainly not, not 10 if I would go out into the mall I would spend hours of my day searching and begging people to come get their hair done because if I I knew that if I came back with only one or two people or no pe people at all they would have my head and it would be my fault so that was a thing and on top of that, not only that, you actually, I, I forgot to mention a really, really, really important detail about all of this. They had to get a specific cut done. So it's not any cut of their choosing. It's not just a trim. It's not just a blow dry. It's not just a style that of course anybody would be like, yeah, sure, if I get a free cut. I get a free trim. I get a free style. No, honey. They had to get a bob. They had to get a pixie cut. They had to get, you know, like who in their right mind is going to want a pixie cut just randomly walking around. Who is gonna want a drastic change like that when I'm just walking out in the mall going up to girls with long hair or, you know, whatever and asking them for a pixie cut or a bob that is only specific to, almost specific to a certain age group, you know? People with bobs, older women, you know, people that are in their 30s to 50s range, I don't know, like, these were specific cuts and like sure I could go out into the mall and find like somebody who would want a nice trim or some layers or whatever but that's not what they wanted. They wanted us to find somebody that was willing to chop their hair off for training purposes. Honey, no. That's not gonna happen. And I did everything that I could. I advertised on social media. You know, I really tried, I really worked hard and I never gave up, but I still got hammered and I still got talked down to. And that's not even the worst part, okay? I would do my cuts and my styles and whatever and 
there were two people that were in charge of training us and I later found out that they weren't even licensed themselves. Um, they were doing clients uh, illegally without their license and um, I mentioned that at one point but it didn't matter but anyways so they were just regular stylists that they took to train for us. They didn't even have their license yet. Now these two stylists, I'm gonna call them Sylvia and Andrew, okay? So they were our trainers, Sylvia and Andrew, and these are fake names by the way. So Sylvia and Andrew would come up to us individually after I did my best work and I was so excited and when I do my clients, they literally, I asked them, I'm like, how is the length, how is the look, what do you think of it, is it good, do you want me to change it, is there anything you don't like, whatever, I make sure, I'm a perfectionist, I make sure I do a good job. And they would love it, and then Sylvia and Andrew would come over and they'd be like, they would be like, you butchered that cut, that looks awful, you did a terrible job. Like they would say these things in front of the client, they would straight up, bash us in front of the client and then the client would be sitting there like oh my god and I would be there like what the heck okay I just want to quickly show you guys my work here you go this is my work this is the stuff I do tell me if this looks butchered bad ugly horrific whatever tell me please I would really like to know because my Instagram account is higher than theirs but anyways, we'll get back into that later. Um, Sylvia took credit for my work, but anyways, we'll continue that in a second. They would come up to me and they would just completely tear me down, make me feel like crap, tell the client that I did a bad job and that I butchered, those words, butchered their hair. And I, you know, I had meltdowns. I had anxiety attacks over this. Like it was horrible. At the end of the day, guys, I really didn't learn much. I really didn't learn much except that I was a bad stylist and I wasn't going anywhere and I did a bad job and whatever. They tore us down like we were nothing. It was horrific. It was bullying. It was awful. Anyways, and they didn't just do it to me. They did it to everybody and none of us deserved that and it was horrible. One day I came in sick and I would try to work as hard as I could but there was one day where I was like sneezing and I was coughing and I had a runny nose and I looked like crap and I was just really struggling and Sylvia took me aside and actually she didn't even take me aside in front of everyone she's like wow you look awful you really need to do better with yourself and you need to smarten up because I come in here when I'm sick too and I'm like oh my god like I'm trying my best like I I'm working right now like I can't help if I have to cough or sneeze or whatever I do like I am sanitary like it's fine and she I just kept coughing and sneezing throughout the day and she's like you know what I've had enough of you please leave and I ended up leaving to go home because I was sick. Another day I came in wearing my regular makeup like you guys have seen me wear and she walked up to me and she said, you literally look like you're dying. You are so pale. Please go put on some blush. And she would say that a lot throughout the week. You know, she'd come up to me, she'd say, your outfit looks terrible. Go to the mall and buy a new one and come back. And also, she was a stylist. She wasn't even the boss of me. She was on the same level as me. She, she had no say. And f when I first started there, I kind of listened to what she said. I kind of took her crap and I, you know, I'd let her talk down to me. But then after a couple of months working there, I didn't take it anymore. I had enough. When I would be on my lunch break, she would come in and criticize me for eating on my lunch break or being on a break and she'd make me go back to work. This girl was out to get me. I kid you not. It was ridiculous. I don't even know why. One day I wore a pink bra under a matte black shirt and throughout the day when I was working really hard, I think one of my, the pink straps fell over my shoulder and she came over and she's like, you know what, I don't know why you're dressing like that. You shouldn't be wearing a bright pink, pink, pink bra to work. Please cover your straps, whatever. And I felt really like, wow, like calm down please don't come after me about my bra like it's not see-through it was perfectly covered 
the strap was pink like that's what she had a problem with and then a couple days later I would see her coming in with a white skirt and I could see her black underwear underneath and nobody said anything like you know what you should dress appropriately for work absolutely but I was dressing appropriately I had to I was completely covered in black I had to wear black every day because the assistants had to wear black and everybody else could wear what they wanted but the assistants had to wear black and it had to be appropriate right and it was but she would come after me over every single thing I knew that Everybody who worked there, the managers, my co-workers, everything, they didn't really care about us apprentices. They didn't really care about us, the people that were training, because we would go in, I would go in some days, and keep in mind, this was like an hour from my house. I had to commute an hour to get to this place, and I wasn't even getting paid for it. It was just training. So I would... <laughs> training me spending the whole day in the mall looking for volunteers that was my training just so you know anyways so i would get in to the salon some days so i would come in i would set up my station i would get ready to be trained and my manager would come up to me and be like oh um sylvia and andrew aren't here today so you guys aren't training today and then i would literally be like why didn't anybody call me? I just traveled like an hour to get here. I have to bus. This was before I was even driving. Like I had to lug this huge box of like my equipment here. And it's like seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, why wouldn't anybody call me? Why wouldn't anybody let me know that my day is canceled, whatever. And they would just be like, too bad like they didn't care like they literally did not care these people were literally the devil like I'm not even kidding like they were demons it was awful and I just felt so small like I just felt so like unimportant it came time to do the exam and this is months and months and months after the training and we had to bring in 10 um, models to do 10 different cuts on this would go on through the entire day eight hours and we would do these cuts and um andrew was there to um check over everything mark it and then this would be the final exam for me to finally move on from being a trainee and become a new talent and get paid and do real clients and really work as a stylist and it was a very exciting time it is not easy to get 10 people during the work week to come and get their hair done separate cuts different specific separate cuts it's very difficult and i did that for this one day people went out of their way i was very grateful i was very thankful and i'm in the middle of the exam and andrew one of the persons that were supposed to mark my work disappeared completely gone completely disappeared and i was horrified i'm like hey i already did half my cuts some of them are marked and now he's gone and my clients are getting you know a little anxious a little like um you know like restless like they don't want to wait this whole time and i'm looking around for help i'm looking for my manager for help i'm looking you know and i'm complaining i'm like this can't happen this is my exam day i worked hard for this i had all of these people come and you're telling me that this guy just completely disappeared and nobody knows knows where he is at all i was furious finally they got one of the other stylists to come mark my work um i passed i did a really good job supposedly and then a couple days later I'm like okay so what now I go for a meeting with my manager and Andrew's there in the room what does he say to me um, I had to leave because I had to pick up some products and you're gonna have to do the exam over again are you kidding me I had already had my 10 clients I had already done the cuts I had somebody else check it mark it and pass me I said there's no way this is unprofessional. This is not okay. I was absolutely furious. I was hurt. I was frustrated. I had worked so hard and this was their mistake and they would have to deal with it. And I told them that. And after a long fight and a long struggle and arguing, they finally were like, okay, you're right. 
and I became a new talent. So, this salon had this Instagram that was really well known and if you made it on this Instagram, it was kind of a big deal. So like if I posted a picture of my work and tagged this salon in it and they posted it on their own Instagram page, I was thrilled. I That would have been the best thing ever and that's exactly what happened. So I did this one lady, it was a pixie cut and I was doing her hair and I had Sylvia, my trainer from the past, come and check it because I, I'm not very comfortable with pixie cuts. They're not my favorite thing to do. They're not my strong suit. Um, but I had done a good job and I had finished the cut. She came and she looked at it, like she checked like the outline, I think she like made a few tiny little um, cuts, like not even, it was dry, it was styled, it was done. She just like maybe just did a little bit of notching and that was it, like she had done nothing to it. She literally just checked it, um, you know, clipped some of the outline and that was it, it was done. I posted the picture, tagged the salon, and they posted it for me and had my name on it and my caption and everything. It was so exciting and I was so happy and I was showing everybody and then a couple weeks later, I was still excited about it and for people that hadn't seen it yet, I searched it up to show them and what does it say in the caption? It had been edited, it had been changed, and it had her name on it. It had Sylvia's name on it and she was the one who had done the cut and the work and everything. This had to be the straw that broke the camel's back, honey. That was it for me. I decided to write a letter to my manager on how I was being um, bullied how I was being targeted by this person, how, how I didn't feel comfortable working with her anymore. Um, I didn't want her checking over my work. I didn't want her being near me. She had said all of these things to me regarding my appearance, um, telling me what to do, bossing me around, and whatever. I sent this letter to my manager, confident, that it was going to be confidential as everything in the manager's office should be. And the next day I came to work and every single person, stylist, worker there knew about this letter and everybody had known about it. This manager told Sylvia and probably read it to her because Sylvia went on to tell everybody in the salon that I had told on her, that I had snitched on her, that I had written all these lies about her, that to be careful of me, to, nobody should be talking to me, you know, that was awful. That was so awful and then I knew that nobody had good intentions for me, nobody had my back, and I was completely on my own dealing with this crap, for lack of a better word. She just kept making little comments here and there, other people started making comments here and there, people would walk up to me and ask me about the letter, and like, did you actually write that? Did you actually do that? It was awful. And there was this one time where I had a client scheduled to come in and she was coming from way out of town, way out of the way, and this was her first time coming to this mall. It's a really big mall. She had no idea where the salon was inside the mall, so I texted her and told her where to go. Next thing I know, I'm pulled into the um, office. And my manager is there, and so is Andrew, the trainer, stylist, person, whatever you want to call it. They told me that they were going to send me home for the day because they had caught me texting. Every single person in that salon texts. They're on their phones 24-7. I am never on my phone. I am literally cleaning up, I'm assisting, I'm doing clients. I had just texted my client on where to go to find the salon and 
I had the text and the time to prove that. And I had showed them, but it didn't matter. They were gonna send me home. And out of the blue, I just started bawling my eyes out because I was embarrassed, I had had enough. I literally, I just had enough of this crap. They were out to get me, like it was awful. And they were gonna send me home for texting my client directions and I had the text and I had the proof. And as soon as I started crying and having a panic attack, my manager goes, why are you crying? And I said, because I have to go out there and tell my client to go home that drove hours to get to me, to get me to do their hair, and it's unprofessional and it's embarrassing and it's bad for my work and my clientele reputation. And she goes, oh, I thought you were crying because you were sorry. And I was like, I am not sorry, I didn't do anything wrong. So she sent me home and I had panic attacks. I had had anxiety all night. I was crying all night. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I was scared to quit because I would be jobless. And keep in mind, this is like my first job after college. So I had no idea that it was very easy to find another job. But I was stressed. I had anxiety. I had worked so hard. I had gone through so much crap to get to where I was as a stylist. And I wasn't gonna quit. And I felt like I couldn't quit. And I didn't have the power to quit and it was a struggle and I suffered for a very, very long time until I did end up quitting. But I came back the next day furious and I had walked through the salon and seen all of these stylists on their phones and I marched into the manager's office and I said, all of these people are on their phones, are you gonna send them home for the day? Or is it just me? And I was so mad because I'm like, we're getting treated differently. Like I got sent home for texting a client. Meanwhile, all of these people are on the floor right now texting and you're not gonna send them home. That's not okay. You have to treat everybody the same. You have to treat everyone equally. And she did not care. She did not care about what I had to say. It was a big mess. And you know what? I was just very, very uncomfortable there. This place was very, very toxic. We would do a, like assistant work, we would clean up, we would work literally on our hands and knees, we put our blood, sweat and tears into assisting and we weren't allowed to speak. If I was talking to a coworker or a fellow assistant while we were doing something, while we were doing the towels, while we were doing laundry, while we were cleaning the sinks, washing clients hair, whatever, we were not allowed to speak. We were not allowed to talk to each other. It was a very, very, very stressful time when I was working there and it wasn't enjoyable at all. I was talked down to every time I was there. They would scream at me in front of clients telling me I did a bad job. Um, they would tell me that I didn't look good every day. They would tell me that um, my face wasn't pretty enough and I needed to wear more makeup. The men who worked there were very inappropriate in many, many ways. I would go to the back and they would be like, with the women, they'd be like grabbing them and they'd be slapping each other's asses and they would be, you know, like very touchy-feely with them. And sometimes it would happen to me and I was just very uncomfortable with it all. And, you know, the people that were already stylists were very like, rude to us, the people that were apprentices, the people that were just starting out, they were very mean and cruel and nobody had our best interests in mind and I had tried to reach out for help, I had tried to go to the managers and it's, you know what, it's triggering for me because it's just like high school. It's just like being bullied, going to the office for help and not having anybody help you. Not having anywhere to go and my only way out was to quit. Eventually, that's what I did after long, long crying all the time. I eventually made the decision to quit. And you guys, I can't stress this enough. No workplace is worth the amount of anxiety, sleepless nights, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, stress. No workplace is worth that. I'm telling you guys, and when I quit, this weight was lifted off of me. I wasn't worried about getting another job because I knew that 
I, you know, God has a plan for me and everything would work itself out. But the fact that I was able to leave and feel confident in my decision, I was so proud of myself for doing that. And I had really made a difference in there because you know what? I had friends that were assistants and new talents and apprentices and everything that were being treated the same way that I was. And as soon as I quit, a majority of them quit very shortly after me. I mean, I don't know what the people that are still there are doing. Like, it sucks. Because here's the thing, when I became a new talent and I was, you know, I'm always working towards the future and I really wanted to become a junior stylist and get bigger and bigger and bigger and work towards, you know, building myself up and becoming higher and higher in the spectrum, they were telling us that they had to keep us as an assi as assistants for longer because they didn't have any room for us on the floor and if we wanted to work as a stylist we would have to share a station oh my gosh share a station how does one share a station there was one mirror there's one equipment there's one chair how do you share a station at the same time it's just ridiculous and i'm like you know what i've had enough there's too many people here it's so unorganized it's so unprofessional i'm leaving and you know what i didn't learn anything from there when it comes to technique i didn't learn anything um didn't learn anything about color what i learned there and keep in mind, even bad experiences in life are good lessons. Actually, the worst experiences in life are the best lessons. And I would do it all over again because it made me, it, it showed me what not to do as a salon owner. It showed me what not to do when it comes to apprentices or people that are just starting out that need help, that need guidance, that need a strong person to be there for them, to have their back and show them the way. It showed me how to treat my potential employees, my potential co-workers, my business partners. It showed me how to treat people better and it showed me what not to do. Where I'm at now is not at all where I thought I was going to be in those times. That was about three, almost four years ago now. And I never thought that my YouTube would be so successful, that my hairstyling account would be so successful, and my business would be thriving. And it's all because of you guys, and I'm really thankful. But it's all because I'm a hard worker, and I never gave up, and I never let them convinced me to stop what I loved doing. You know, I never let them really get to me and I learned from it and my <laughs> Instagram hairstyling account is at a higher uh, following than theirs now. And I remember being there and thinking like how big it was for me to be on their Instagram and mine is even higher than theirs and that's huge and you know what you guys it just goes to show that the biggest revenge you could ever get on somebody is success success hard work don't stop believing in yourself never ever ever treat people the way they treat you if they are cruel Never, ever, ever, you know, be like them. Stoop to their level because then you're no better. I know it's hard, but you guys, like, you have to stay true to yourself and treat people the way you would want to be treated, but never, ever, ever take crap from anybody. Know your worth. Know the laws. Know the laws of the workplace. Seriously, you guys, know your stuff because I know my stuff and I was able to get through this and you guys can too. So if you're at, you know, it, work is work. You're never gonna love work because it's work and that's fine. But no workplace is worth crying over, having panic attacks over, having sleepless nights over. Really, really think hard about that, you guys. Um, and if that's what you're going through right now, and you're looking for a sign, this is your sign. Leave, quit, find another place. God has a plan for you, I promise. 
the, and if you don't believe in God, the universe has a plan for you and you're going to be okay. And if you keep working hard and you do what you believe and you follow your heart, it will work out for you. I promise, I promise, I promise. I love you guys so much. I'm sorry that this is a really, really long video. If you guys like this video, I have a lot more stories just like this of learning experiences and a lot of stuff when it comes to the hairstyling industry and how crazy it can be sometimes. Um, but I love what I do. Guys, please go and check and follow my hairstyling account. I'd really appreciate that. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for making my dreams come true and make helping me become successful. I love you guys so much. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button. If you like me and my channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I make new videos every week, you guys. Peace and love.